Ah, Christ's sake. Come here. <laughs> Would you like a glass of water? Just look into my eyes. You, here. We're going to go here, and then we're going to go there. Come to me. Like that? Is that better? Yeah, there's a hole there. I know, which yeah. is why I zipped it up. But you can't see the hole. Look at the monitor. In Britain, people resume that's come from a hot rock. Well, what are you doing? You're screwing everything up. Oh, Mr. Sound. You're trying to touch my breast. <laughs> Did he do it with the classic back of the hand trick? It's classic, isn't it? Have back of the hand, nipple, and come on. <laughs> it's, it's just classic, isn't it? Just, what do I call you? My friends call me M. Just M. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That's quite South London. Just using the first letter. Yeah. Quite South London gangsters do that. Oh, well, good. I want to be associated with gangsters. And where are you from? Uh, Barnet. Barnet. It's mm. kind of North London. It's, it's suburban. Okay. Nice accent. First thing, well, very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Now, this is your first television interview in Britain for years. Yeah. Um, you've had a child, you've turned 40, and now you've had a best-selling, award-winning album. You must be feeling pretty good about life. I'm feeling excellent. Mm. Mm. Okay. Does it give you great satisfaction when people have written you off? And I've looked kind of back, and there's loads of times when people seem to write you off, and then you come back and answer your critics. Yeah. I've sort of been putting up with that for my entire career, so now I sort of expect it. Gives me a bit of a challenge. And I was thinking, well, all that's left must be just sort of answering critics. Is that, is that, does that well, ever motivate you? in terms of work, that's not all that's left. What drives me is that I love what I do. And I know that the criticism is part of the package. Um, and at the end of the day, I think if everyone just universally decided to like me, I would probably at this point think that I was doing something wrong. You know? I think a bit, I think, I think rubbing people the wrong way is, to a certain extent, is a good thing. Rubbing people the wrong way is a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's a good note. I remember that. I just remember to piss a few more people off. Okay. Madonna <laughs> says, piss people off. No, that's not <laughs> what I mean. I know what you mean. Okay. Uh, the thing is, you said you know you're quite happy with life at the moment. Hmm. And yet, if I listen to the album, it's quite, it's quite, it's a bit sad. quite melancholy. It is sad in there. Um, well, I, I think I exercised a lot of my sadness through my writing, and I'm a very uh, sentimental person. I'm a romantic. I can get really melancholy at times, and um, I think I work a lot of stuff out when I write. I think most people do. Mm, cathartic get it, thing. Get it out of my system. You're quite a romantic, would you say? Completely. Hopelessly. I mean, do you ever go for sort of big romantic gestures? Do you go for any of that? Oh, God, yeah. And w when they are bestowed upon me, it's a great thing. What's the, what's the, what's the most touching romantic gesture you've had? God. Well, one time... Um, I was, uh, I, I, one time I was coming out of the recording studio and I was going to get into my car and I opened the door for my car and it was completely filled with flowers. Good and gesture. That's beautiful, isn't it? Can we say who did it? No. Or doesn't he deserve it? <laughs> no, I'd just rather not say. I'd rather not but say. But it's a very romantic gesture. That's a really romantic gesture. Yeah, really and romantic? I like things like that. You like things like that? Yeah. So I'm very old-fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> I know you well. I always thought of you as really modern. No, actually. that's what really, what? I am. That's the, that's the thing about me. I'm a contrast, or a contra contra novel. contradiction. I like old, a lot of really old-fashioned things. Um, I'd rather have my entire house lit by candlelight, um, but I like really futuristic-sounding music. Your life has been chronicled blow by blow pretty well for 18 years. Do you ever stop and think, how am I going to get out of this? Get out of what, my life? Well, just, yeah, get out of the, just the, the, kind of the world you created for yourself, there, where everybody knows you. Well, first of all, everybody doesn't know me. They, knew, they know certain aspects of me. And second of all, there's lots of ways that I get out of it. I mean, when I'm on promotional tours or I'm on a tour or I'm doing things that are very public, that's just one part of my life. I have a lot of private time and I have a lot of homes that I go to where people mm. leave me alone. I was thinking, where can she get off a well, plane where and think, Ooh, I'm anonymous here. But actually... uh, where I grew up, in Michigan, in the Midwest. <laughs> really? Oh, please. People could give, you know... Two shits about me there. Can I say that on TV? You just did. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> okay. Um, and in, to a certain extent, Los Angeles, people really leave you alone because there's so many celebrities in the city. And then, you know, it's sort of like people are used to it, so you get left alone. The thing I read recently, you don't particularly like LA. Well, I mean, what's your sort of, what, what's somewhat your life when you're in LA? Well, it's not the most, like, culturally rich city that you could go to, but you can get lost in LA because it's a very, it's not a pedestrian town. You have to have a car to get anywhere and people are very separate from mm -hmm. each other. So it, you do, you know, 
you do get to have a lot more privacy there because of that. So since the car off, they're not no. used to kind of walking amongst fellow humans. No, which, is an which, old thing, we've got which I miss if I'm there for very long. But it's a quiet place um, with a lot of really ugly houses, and you can get a lot of sleep there. Which is nice. Yes, isn't it? Sleeping is good. Sleeping is good. Okay. <laughs> um, do you still go out to talk to clubs and dancing? And where do you go and what sort of nights do you? Have? Mm, I don't really go out that much anymore because. It, what happens is if I go out on the dance floor and start dancing, a circle inevitably forms around me, and then suddenly I have an audience, and then suddenly I think, feel like I'm working, you know, and then I, I want to go home. That must be actually one of the most dreadful experiences, I think. But I go to private parties where there's dancing. And do they still form a circle? Or is everyone no, fine? because it's usually all my friends. Yeah, but I know, I, did you used to, really, used to love clubs, I presume. And, totally, that's yeah. where I started out. I mean, that's, and that's where I played my earliest demos. I used to hang out with DJs in the DJ booth, and it was great fun. Would it be a fair assumption that you, I mean, as the song says, Drown Well, that you have traded fame for love? Well, that song is really kind of a reflection, looking back at my past and sort of the, you know, the path that my career took, and to a certain extent, when you become famous, if, you know, you do trade, you do trade um, one kind of love for another kind of love. You trade universal love or approval from the masses for um, for intimacy with maybe one person. Did you know you were kind of making that trade no, at the time, I or was it not till after? No, it was very, um, you know... There was never a kind of, what I'm saying is there's never a kind of pact with the devil moment. No, like because that, you, absolutely not, I wasn't aware. I mean, nobody knows what fame is going to do to them, and nobody knows how successful they, they're going to be when they start off in their career, but it's very heady. You know, so it's a very heady thing to like, hear like hundreds and hundreds of people standing outside your hotel room window chanting your name or entertaining a hundred thousand people in a soccer stadium and, fe and feeling the, the, you know, the intense feelings that they have. I can understand how the soccer stadium experience would be good, but I, I find that, that the chanting outside no, no, the no, hotel... No, 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 it's I irritating. It's, yeah. it, it's irritating, but the thing is, you're kind of... All I'm trying to say is what happens is suddenly everyone wants you mm -hmm. and everyone wants you to be here and be there and do this and do that and you get you can get very caught up in it it's very seductive but in order to do that you end up sacrificing time with you know perhaps a relationship or a one-on-one -on -one situation or even nurturing your friendships okay well let's have a look at the song now drown world here it is does that sound like a dj when you do that no good okay the line from drown world i've got down here had so many lovers who settle for the thrill of basking in my spotlight. Yeah. Uh, do you think you're... Did you have to go to that line? <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you, are you, do you think you have been attracted to the wrong people? Are you attracted H haven't to the wrong we people? all been? I and mean, you, has you, every I, one I, of I your relationships been... It's a lesser been... extent, isn't it? I'm saying, yeah, do, you, do, you, do you feel that... It's hard, you know, it's hard to know sometimes. You have to be really careful. You know, people, a lot of people have agendas. And if you've been hurt or betrayed a few times, you start to, like, you know, you start relationships and you, you know, you find yourself like watching and waiting and listening for things where, you know, people might be indicating that they have ulterior motives. What are the tells? Um... When do you think, oh dear, we got on, this is another wrong one. Oh, I suppose one of them is when they're really interested in having their picture taken with you every time you go out. <laughs> right, that's a bad one. That's, that's a bad one. <laughs> Stage two is when they, um, Send the faxes you've sent them to the National Enquirer. Bad. <laughs> that's very bad. Yes. V very bad sign. Yeah. Is there, and then stage three, presumably that's it. They've gone after your faxes. Well, or... stage three is I, you know, hire an assassin and right. uh, get killed, basically. It's the only way, isn't it? Yeah. Murder. Mm. South London. We're talking about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think it was a case of that, that you're often that you're equipped to deal with the intrusion into your life, but you're lovers must be really surprised at it. It's almost like they've suddenly gone straight into the fast lane. It is an adjustment to make. It is. You have to be, you know, strong and self-confident. When you're out with someone who hasn't obviously experienced anything like you experienced just on a... On a well, not many people have. Yeah, exactly. So that basically yeah. covers everyone I've been yeah. out with. Um, what, what are you asking me? I don't know. I just wanted to carry on talking about it. I was just quite oh, well, you stuff. just want to talk about my love life. Yeah, well, yeah, no, <laughs> not really. I, just want, I, I find it just... Uh, what it must be like for a chap. You I know, think it's really being difficult. Being so eclipsed by the woman they're going with, sort of in that way, and. and um, I think it's difficult, but like I said, you you know you have to have a sense of your own identity, and and, and 
more importantly, just self-confidence and really being able to put things in perspective. It's just for that moment. It is not, you know, it, it, it's not the most important, it's not the founding basis of the relationship. If you love me, then you have to sort of accept that part of my life okay. and be able to deal with it. But it, I didn't, you know, you don't have to like it, okay? No, no, no. <gasps> okay. As you got more famous, did you find yourself trusting people less? Or just being naturally suspicious of everyone's motives? I'm not talking, I've gone no, off the No, actually, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a naturally suspicious person. It's probably a fault of mine. I'm, I, I, I think I have a pretty good built-in bullshit detector with people, but I've made mistakes. And it still, you know, hasn't stopped me from being an open person. So. How do you ensure you're getting that honesty when, in, in, in a lot of your relationships, you are the boss? I'm not talking about... You hire intelligent people. Intelligent people aren't going to bullshit you because, and you hire confident people because the people that lie to you are the people who are afraid they're going to lose their job if they tell you the truth and then there's, there wouldn't be another job. Now, an intelligent, talented, uh, confident person would say, well, if telling the truth gets me fired, then that's too bad and mm -hmm. I can get another job. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So. There's more, I, I would think it was their, their fear of say, if I say that, she's just going to go mad. I can't tell her that. She's just going to go mad. Well, listen, I hear lots of uh, dissension from people that work for me and and so you do have that around you, you have, absolutely you, have you know people arguments. tell me you know that doesn't look good on you or you know you should do that vocal again it wasn't right it wasn't good enough you can do better than that uh yeah and i want that if everyone was always sitting around going yeah that's great yeah that's great i would be and highly it's one, of the, it's one of the many <laughs> images of you that has kind of been pumped out as isn't it as somebody who sort of presides over an empire where people I do preside over an empire. I know, I know you know, but they sort of say, well, oh, no, no, they're all quite frightened of them. <laughs> yeah, oh, listen, you don't want to be doing can that. Can I just tell you something? Oh, you can't be... going to go mad. Well, you cannot be successful if you're surrounded by yes-men or yes-women. I always want other people's input. You can't go wrong if you surround yourself with other yes smart people. Yes okay. No, no, not yes No, I mean the other way around, you know what I mean. Okay. Yes and no and maybe men. Yeah, yes and no and maybe men. Yeah. <gasps> Okay, did we satisfy your curiosity? You there? satisfied all my curiosity. I tell you, I'm now going to ask you a question which is designed to hold people over the break. <laughs> you don't have to answer it when we come back, okay? Mm -hmm. Who, in your opinion, either by experience or reputation, is the world's hottest lover? Who? We're back in a couple of seconds. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> the best who is the best lover that's right okay that's brilliant thank you very much it's a good question it's a very good question who's the best shag or if not give me my number just give you your number okay who's the best okay so there was the question would you like to answer it absolutely not okay fantastic okay um, I went out today uh, because I, I was thinking what shall I ask you went out questions? on the street and asked people yes Oi. I went out on the street and, and I went out and I, I box pops loads of people, okay. asked loads of people questions. I'll just say no if I don't want to ask. Okay. Everything for free, what does she pay for? If she gets everything for free, what does she pay for? That's so not true. First of all, Prada doesn't give me anything for free. Don't they? No. They but... must do now. You've name checked them on a big show. They're so cheap. I get freebies from some stores, but not from other stores. Do you want to thank all those freebie people now, just to ensure they continue to... Uh... Yes, I would love to thank um, Versace, Gucci, Dolce & Gabbana, um, um, Alexander McQueen, um, John Galliano, um, oh shit, you uh, do a lot of Gautier. <laughs> So, but the answer to the question is, you don't get everything for free at all. You have to pay for you have to pay, well, you have to pay for any of those. Did I you, had to pay for these shoes. Um, the rest of what I'm wearing, I didn't have to pay for. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, but I, I I'm doing them a favor. <laughs> the designers, I mean, because everybody, you know, they they see the clothes and they want them too. Yeah. So I'm a sales rep. It's in my spare time. <laughs> I'm just a sales rep. <laughs> That's what you do, you just go around the world repping. That's right. Okay. What's your favorite dessert? What's your favorite dessert? Uh -huh. mm. um, well, I love desserts. See, my favorite dessert is this dessert they have at the Ivy. Have you, have you eaten that? Yeah, yet? I eat that. Okay, what's well, that? Sticky times. toffee something or another? Probably sticky toffee pudding. Yeah, that. Oh my God, that's so it's incredible. It's good, isn't it? It's sinful. Did you have it with um, custard or e did you have it with a bit of cream? 
I, I don't know, but it, it just has to have a lot of that goofy, syrupy stuff on it. It's so good. Yeah, it's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, you can get it in tins here, in, in just regular corner shops. You can? Yeah, you can get a really good uh, Heinz sponge. Marvellous. Okay. Did you used to be a boxer? No, but I've been hit a lot. Did you get your nose broken? Yes. Okay. No, it's terrible. It's like no, I mean, no, it's a good look. Don't do that. Sorry. <laughs> it's really, it's not good up there. Hmm. Maybe there. you should get someone to hit you on that side, and it will straighten it straighten out. Straighten it out. Yeah. But it is in shadow there. <laughs> uh, if a man. Uh huh. And that's it for that question. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm doing. <laughs> and the answer is no. I wish no. I was that deep. I'm quite a shallow individual. Let's stick to the shallow thing. Okay, let's stick to that. It's better, okay. isn't it? Do you think it sits better with me? Okay. If a man achieves your level of fame, he's almost seen as a genius. He's what? But if a man achieves your level of fame and notoriety, he's almost seen as a genius. But if a woman does it, she's seen more, more as being lucky or a manipulator. Mm. Um, is there still, do you see that double standard? And would you like to now share that with the group? Yeah, to a certain extent. I mean, I think that our society is a bit intimidated and naturally suspicious of women who are incredibly successful, famous, rich, whatever you want to call it. They have to sort of find things. Oh, she didn't do it by herself. Oh, mm -hmm. she slept her way to the top. Oh. She can't really sing. Oh, she doesn't do this. Oh, she'll be over with in a minute. Oh, she's stupid. Oh, blah, 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 you know. You've had all those. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I do what think, hurts the most I do think that there is a double standard in our society, but um, it, hasn't, it hasn't held me back now, has it? Of the kind of charges that have been <laughs> leveled against you over the years, which, which, one, which one kind of pisses you off the most over the years? Which, which one that keeps cropping up is just like really gets you? The one Why that's... Why, yeah, you ought to... Um, I think the thing that bo the one that bothers me the most is that um, is that the relationships that I have with men aren't substantial relationships. I hate it when they call my boyfriends my boy toys. That is so irritating. And demeaning. Demeaning. Demeaning to me. Demeaning to them. Um, and I, I just can't stand for it. I'd ask her about you know the British press. The ask British press. They, you know if they're really as bad as people say. Because she travels the world, she witnesses all different... Are Absolutely. the British press the worst? And Absolutely. Come. OK, nice one. I shall ask her that. They're certainly a lot kinder than they used to be. Are they? Do you think they've mellowed? Definitely. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't know whether you feel disappointed or relieved. Well, I'm relieved. It's relieved, yeah. Yeah. I'm relieved. But they, you think they used to be a lot worse? Yeah. Yeah, because I think they just saw me sort of acting out and being rebellious and... And uh, I, I think I was an easy target, and I didn't know how to handle myself in all situations, but I've gotten better at it through the years. And, you know, in, in a way, it's sort of like, oh, well, you know, 15, 16 years have gone by, and we haven't, like, beaten her down to the ground yet. She mm. survived. She's okay. still going. We haven't kicked the shit out of her. Okay, so we'll let her, you know, let her off the hook. You think that's what they kind of thought? Yeah, I suppose it must be. After a while. They've done what they've, they've, they've is, given her their it, best They couldn't shot, say they? anything worse than they've already, I mean, I've had everything leveled at me, so. Okay, did we ever get to a saturation point with you where there was nothing else to know? Oh, please, I've revealed very little about myself in truth. Do you think? I know. Do you think you know me? Oh, well, not now I've started talking to you. Well, there you go. You think that the thing is, I have revealed certain things, certain aspects of my character. You can't help but reveal yourself through your work, through your art, music, whatever that might be, but um, there's no way that that's the sum total of me. And you know, people don't really know anyone unless they sit and start talking to them, so. But I've noticed I've maintained the eye contact, don't you appreciate that? I do. That's How could we problem. do an interview if you couldn't look at me? Well, some people, do you ever get that shifty interviews? Oh, yeah. Shifty interviews. They don't go very well. <laughs> what sign are you? Me? No, the guy sitting behind you. Um, uh, I was born in Barnet. <laughs> no, shut up. What sign are you? Um, cancer. Cancer. Mm. Well, what's, mm. what's your birth date? 16th of July. Okay. Thank you. Well, what, you, no, what have you logged there? Because you go, what, 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 No, well, what? cancers, like, they're very emotional people. Are they? Yeah, very sensitive. I'm always accused of being really stoical and unemotional. That's quite weird. Well, maybe your moon is in Virgo. <laughs> <laughs> well, moon's in my trousers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> well, what you, what's your star sign, incidentally? I'm not going to normally my, ask you that. I, it's like such a cheesy chat at lunch. Uh, my uh, sun sign is Leo, and my rising sign is Aquarius, and my moon, my moon is in Virgo. 
Uh, people who have, you know, the moon rules your emotions. Does it? Yes. And so if you have a tendency to sort of keep your, play your cards close to your chest, you know, and you have a tendency to be a bit withholding and careful with your love, then you, you know, is that you? Well, uh, my Auntie Hillary's a Virgo. Hmm. Yeah, but are you withholding? Let's get back to you. I, I probably do, actually, a little bit. Well, no, except to those that know me. Let's ask another question. Okay. When most people turn 40, they start going to the gym. When you turn 40, you stopped going to the gym. Well, right around the time I had the baby. I worked out until the last day, the day I gave birth, I was working out in the gym. Desperate to push that baby out. Okay. Um, and then after I had the baby, I never worked out again. Okay, do you think you go back to the gym or do you now see it was quite no, a boring place? No, huge waste of time. Do you see all that time jogging and gymming as a, as a real... Huge waste of time. Thank God, I've never done any. You haven't? No, never. You I should do yoga, to... though. Do you think it's all right? It's excellent for suppleness, toning not, a, not only your body, but your internal organs. And yoga will keep your body healthy and lithe and youthful till you're 80. Age gracefully. What do you think? I was asking you. Well, what do you think? Well, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, I've been aging before your very eyes. Yeah, but I meant later on. Not now. Okay, well, I certainly... You know what I mean, I mean... Oh, you mean when I'm 80 and I've got blue well, hair? 60... Up okay, 50 I up certainly hope I do. Cher age. Cher? I think she's aged very gracefully. Well, yeah, I just meant her age. I didn't say she didn't age gracefully. Okay, um, yes. <laughs> I think we're all out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa there. No one's dissing Cher. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, um, I'd now like to talk about Lourdes. How has Lourdes changed your life? She's aging gracefully. Is she aging gracefully, is she? <laughs> yes. Looking good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, she's changed my life in, in, in a million ways. Um, she brings me incredible amounts of happiness and joy. Just to look at her makes me smile. When there is so much insanity out there and people are picking at me and I have a tendency to sort of get annoyed by those things, all I have to do is look at her. And I go, oh, right, that's what's important. That's what matters. Is that like the center of your life? Now? Yeah. It's quite palpable mm -hmm. and... Mm-hmm. And it's real. Yeah. Yeah. She's a child. I'm her parent. I'm responsible for her. And that is the most important thing. Because I bumped into mum today in Trafalgar Square. Mm -hmm. um, she's carrying two kids. And I said, what would you like to ask Madonna? How does she find parenthood? How does she find parenthood? It is hard to have the career I have and have a child and try to have a relationship. I mean, it is, it requires an enormous amount of organization and very little free time and very little sleep. And, uh, and you know, one aerial is always suffering. You know, if I'm working too yeah. hard, I think, oh my God, I'm not paying enough attention to my daughter. Do you remember those old plate spinning acts? Yeah, you do have to do a plate spinning act. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, yeah. whatever. I don't, I don't know why people did that. And we always used to be really impressed. Well, it's it was a metaphor for, you know, working mothers. Yeah. <laughs> you just get that one really wobbling. I was going, oh, he doesn't see the one on the end. He's just only run down there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'd ask her why she's got Marilyn Monroe's tattoo on her bum. Has she got Marilyn Monroe's tattoo on her bum? You know that. Supposedly. Supposedly. Who? Someone asked, has she really got Marilyn Monroe tattooed Do on her bum? Do me a favour. And you got big tattoos? I've got no tattoos. You don't have a tattoo? No, not one. Cher's got tattoos. So? <laughs> I'm joking. Will she have any more children? Will she have any more children? Yeah. That's a good point, isn't it? Because she's had one. Will she go on? Will she have a big family? Nice. What's, what's your name? Who? Thank you very much, Cher. That's a good question. I hope so. I'd like to have another. Would you like to have... Like loads? No. No. Okay. Um, with the uh, death of Diana, you're the most fam famous woman in the world, I would say. But what arguably. about Hillary Clinton? Yeah, okay. One of the most famous women in the world. Okay. Um, how did, how did um, obviously you've been pursued by the press, she was pursued by the press, some would say driven to her death by the press. How, how, how did you feel? At, about her death. And well, I thought it was a tragic waste of a life. I mean, I, I and the way that it happened was so awful um, and I interesting sort of poetic way to die. And in, in, certainly in her case, when you saw that um, 
she was so hounded by the press and seemingly so unequipped to deal with it. You know what I mean? So it does sort of seem like they killed her. Obviously, that's not exactly what happened. Um, but um, how did I feel? I was devastated, like everyone. Obviously, the last year has been interesting for because of the death of Diana, and also we have Monica Lewinsky. What do you think about Monica Lewinsky, and what do you think of Monica Lewinsky as a person? I can't judge her as a person. I don't know her. Um, I only know what I read about, and we know how misleading that can be. Oh, beautifully equipped. So. <laughs> but. But that said. But we can um, tell a little bit about her as a person. Well, I think she sh she's probably learned uh, several lessons in the past few months. Mm. Um, um, being discreet would be one of them. <laughs> mm. You know what I mean? Uh, but there is so much about the situation I'm sure I don't know about, so it's hard for me to judge it. I think it's a tragedy that the media's, you know, turned it into such a circus um, and made such a big deal about, you know, a politician lying because after all that is what they do so well i think they always wanted to kind of match up to some standards of a bygone age that excuse actually never me existed. what standard every I president know. cheated on his wife well that's been my point you know and they you know they hold you know john kennedy up like you know he's a god i mean guy's a god. legendary swordsman please totally couldn't keep it in his trousers so they say but he was gorgeous did you were you find i Jeff found Cope? him gorgeous yes what about Bill? Um, no. Can you see the attraction of Bill? Yes, power is a great aphrodisiac. You, you buy into that? Well, it's just a fact of life. Okay, okay. Um, should Clinton be impeached? Should he, should no, he should go? No, that is, you know, okay, what, you know, what he did is between him and his wife, really. I don't think it, it, it is, has anything to do with his ability to lead a country. I think he's actually done some really good things for for America. I had to think about that. I could remember what country I was yeah, in. For Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good Mexican citizen. <laughs> Bien, <Peter. laughs> uh, Don't make me laugh. Do you think it's an interview and it's serious. Sorry, sorry but you, you think he's still a good man, still a good I leader? I think he's brilliant and I totally support him. You think he's brilliant? Yeah. You want to arm wrestle? No, but do you think, you think he's brilliant? <laughs> yeah, I think he's brilliant. He's, he's quite a fibber, though, isn't he? I mean, he is so, a, oh, yeah? Who, just, who isn't? But there must be one righteous You're guy. You're a fibber, out. probably, too. Oh, I lie a bit, yes. So what? Should we rake you yeah, over but the coals I, I'm, for I'm it? I'm not relying on people to vote for me, am I? I'm not saying... Yeah, you I'm not are. standing there You're as a paragon of virtue. Did He didn't. He isn't either. Why, why does a president have to be, you know, morally perfect and pure? No. Well, let's vote in Charles Manson. Well, excuse me, but no human being on this earth is perfect, okay? He made a mistake. So what? Let's move on. Okay. So you don't you think he should stay in power, he's fit to hold power? It's yeah. Fine. I was just being provocative. I think I, he's all right. I, I I know you are, and I'm not falling for it. Okay. Not for a second. Not for a second. Oh no. <laughs> more. You know, she's, she's an intrigue, she's one of the most interesting women on earth. You must have something you want to ask her. Is she coming to London? Is she, she gonna is she coming to London or is yeah. she gonna move here? Does she have a house here? Is she gonna move to London? I think I could. I just have to find the right house. Desperately looking, I haven't found one yet. Are you looking for a gaff in London? Yeah, a gaff. Which sort of area are you looking for? If, if you not need saying, I'm not, not saying. They'll find out. I know, but for the first few weeks I move in, I could have some peace. Right? Okay. Okay. What do you like about London? Oh, lots of things. That's the kind of incisive questions I ask. Um, I love English humour. I love the architecture. I love the street culture here. I love the music. Fashion. I have some incredibly interesting, eccentric friends that live here, um, and I find it very stimulating. Okay. What I mean, do you enjoy? I think people as a whole tend to be a lot more um, educated and intelligent in in Europe as as opposed to America. Even stupid people here are smarter than Americans, basically. As you, you know, know, I mean, there are always exceptions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, everyone knows. Well, people there, before know you about call me. my country intelligent. <laughs> We've built up quite a rep for mindless acts and all. Yeah, but it's a th you know, the education system is different here than it is in America. And people really know a lot more about history and classics and art and literature and things than they do in America. Would you like to raise Lourdes here rather than in the States? Yeah, I would, actually. But I don't know if I can. Why? Well, because her father lives in America. 
and I want her to, you yeah. know, have a life with her father. So, so that, that is quite a, that's going to be quite a, a, a tough decision. Well, I know you, you probably already made it. It is. Decision. It yeah. is a tough decision. I haven't made it. It's just something I'm thinking about. But the thing is, I still want to have a house here because I come here all the time and I can't stand staying in hotels. So. Is it not about hotels? Those hotels are great, aren't they? Ugh, not with a baby. Huh? No. My daughter likes to draw on the walls. <laughs> yeah, you see, they hate that in good hotels, don't they? They come in as crowded everywhere. Right? Yes. It's like drawing some mummy, things like that. I don't know. Uh, does it trouble you the amount of column inches spent on talking about your changing image uh, when there's so much kind of more important things to discuss in the world? Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I'm used to it. Every time I do, you know, change my hair cut or my hair color, it's, it seems to be like headline news. Do you enjoy scheming? Do you enjoy kind of sitting there scheming up your next look? But I look? don't scheme my next look. But you don't, don't you ever sort of think? No, it's really, for me, it's really impulsive. I'll get up in the morning and go, you know what? I'm sick of having blonde hair. I want dark hair. Bam, I change it. Then I'll get up in the morning and go, you know what? I'm sick of having long hair. I'm going to cut my hair. It really is as simple as that. Yes, I think that people ha are under the misconception that I spend, you know, hours and hours and hours plotting and planning my next. Um, outfit or my next. That's what they like to think, and you sort of with loads of advisors no. around the table going with lots of swatches of fabric no. and looks, and no. uh, drawings and sketches. But it's nothing like that. It's just no. you look at think. You can't get good looks that way anyway. The best things are the things you don't plan, as you know. You do know that. Don't well, you? I d some of the, actually the worst things I've ever done have been unplanned, frankly, as well. Yeah, but you have to take risks and you learn from your mistakes. If you know? I was you, I'd be really off with the word reinvention. If I was you, I'd actually, I'd have a gun to if, hand. If one more person asked me yeah. how I keep reinventing And maybe, maybe both barrels, give it to them. Mm -hmm. Why haven't you made a film since Evita? Because I haven't been offered one that was good enough. Okay. Would you, would you like to do uh, another musical ever, or would you... Like I'd to? love to. Okay. If it was good enough. If it was good enough. Yeah, good enough, that's the key word. Okay. You haven't got a film in mind that you're kind of sort of mentally looking for sort yeah, of... Yeah, I have. There is a movie that I'm ah, most probably going to I do. I detected that. <laughs> well, I waited for you to ask. I don't okay. like to volunteer information because my moon is in Virgo. Like my Auntie Hillary. Mm. But you, so you have got a part in mind or something in mind with this film that you're sort of looking for? No, it's happening. It's happening? Yeah. Do you want to, you want to tell me what the name is? It's called The Next Best Thing. It's called The Next Best Thing. Do you know Rupert Everett? Well, I don't know him. He's, a, you know, he's a. Do you like him? Um, well, I don't know him to make the judge. As an actor. Oh, as an actor, yeah. He's done a couple of things I've quite enjoyed. Yeah. Well, he's my co-star. He's your co-star. Oh, he'd be good. He'd be solid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you think you're a good boss? Does power sit comfortably with you? Would you describe yourself yeah, as good? Yeah, I'm a good leader. Mm -hmm. You're a good leader. Mm -hmm. Leo. Mm. -hmm. <laughs> Very good. Does, yeah, you're catching on. Pathetically <laughs> pleased with yourself. <laughs> Because I know a bit about stars. <laughs> uh, what title do you prefer? Actress, singer, or businesswoman? On your business card, it said Madonna. Well, I have to it. act in all of those areas, so just call me an actress. How long will you carry on, do you think, making music? All my life. <laughs> I've got some more questions from the people. Do you mind this? Does she carry cash or cards? Does she carry cash or cards? It's a very good point. So we just don't know, do we? Cards. Always cards. Yeah, I always forget the cash. Sometimes I forget the cards. Mm. What'd you do then? Um, ask someone else to pay for it. Who does she most admire? Who does no. she most admire? Who does she actually look up to? Yeah. A lot of people look up to yeah. her. Who does she look up to? Mm. Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Um, PJ Harvey. PJ Harvey. Mm. I, know you, I understand. Don't you like a bit of drum and bass now? Though? Yeah. And Bjork. You like Bjork? I love her, and I always look forward to her records. Yeah. Yeah, well, she really keeps you guessing. You never know what you're going to get That's what I there. mean. She's very original and And her unique. videos always look great. And, and she's great. a visionary. And I like people that are visionaries. She doesn't seem to care what people think. She just does her own thing, which is nice to see someone like we that. We like that. Um, Hannah wants to know, will you ever have... Plastic surgery. Oh, you are English. <laughs> Sorry, you're just imitating foreign students. Um, no. You want to know, she's <laughs> had plastic gosh. students. Surgery, yeah. Surgery. Okay, she's had plastic students. Surgery. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Ask me in ten years. No, but is it a, right? But is, you, at the moment, you haven't got like a hard and fast principle. Never. No. Because some people just say, "I never do that." Oh, never say never. You never say never. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, we've got a few seconds left. Is there any gesture you'd like to make to your detractors? 
<laughs> Boy, that told him. Put your arm around the middle, that's it. That's it. That's it. Oh. Come, come up. Do that again, but you're, you're very much on your right in the shadow. Oh, that's it. That's that for Really close. We look, should we look down slightly wan? No, look up. That's you it. want light on your face. Yeah, yeah. Not too far up. You get a double chin. That's it. That's great. <laughs> Johnny, look at me. Johnny, look eyes at me. That's lovely. Focus into the camera. Okay. That's great. Straight up. <laughs> your dollar's right in the shadow. Hit up. Can we, can't we do that one thing you where we cover up? You'll give me a big nose. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't got a big nose. Yeah, but if you shadow my nose, it'll look big. I know about these things. Yeah, don't shadow the nose. Here, let me push his nose straight. Yeah, that's great. That's great. That's great. Yeah. It worked. It really worked. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Mwah. Take care of yourself. From a cutting-edge queen of pop to cutting-edge television next in For Later.